welcome. In this video, I will give you an overview of the Digitot Remote Reporting app, a powerful but simple to use cloud-based application that allows you to view the dispensing data for all your venues in one place. Let's take a look at how it works. To start, open your favorite browser and go to control.digitot.com. In order to keep your data safe, only authorized users can access the app, and these users can only see the data that belongs to the venues they are linked to. To enforce these rules, you will firstly be presented with a login screen where you need to enter a valid username and password. Once you successfully log into the app, you'll be taken directly to the stock reporting screen. This is where you will select, configure and visualize your reports. Firstly, you need to select the report type. There are two types of reports, stock take and dispensing. The stock take reports show data from the stock taking devices like the Digitag 204. The dispensing reports show data from dispensing devices like the DigiShot 103. In this video, we will focus on the dispensing report, but the process is very similar for the stock take reports. The next step is to select which type of events to see and how they will be grouped in the report. The two types of events are dispensing events and refill events. For each type of event, the data can be grouped by user, by brand or by device. For now, let's select to see dispense events by brand. Next, we choose which venues we want to generate the report for. A venue is a physical location like a bar or a restaurant and a user can have access to one or more venues. In this example, the user has access to two venues. Let's see the report for the Jack's Pub venue. Now we need to select which zone within the venue we want to see. Zones are usually areas within the venue like a service bar or a VIP lounge. You can also select to see all zones combined, so let's do that. Since the app stores all the events for all devices since installation date, the number of events can be huge. So we must select a period of time in order to show only the events we are interested in. So let's select to see only the events for two consecutive days from the start of the day on the 2nd of May to the end of the day on the 3rd of the same month. You can either type the date or you can select the date using the calendar icon. Note that you can also select the time, so it's possible to see events for a specific period during the day, like happy hour or lunch time for example. Now the last step is to select the unit of measure that will be used to display the events. The options are 25 ml tots or milliliters. Let's select tots. Now we are ready to generate and visualize the report. To generate the report, click on the Generate Report button. The report itself is displayed at the bottom part of the screen. It contains all the events based on the selections we just made. The report has five areas. The title, the header, the column names, the body, and the footer. The most important parts are the header, where the basic configuration for the report is displayed, and the body where the actual events are displayed. The layout of the body changes depending on which event grouping we selected, but it will always contain all the events for the selected time period. Depending on the number of events, the body can span over several pages. To move through the pages, you must use the page navigation buttons. Once you are happy with the report, you can export it to Excel, PDF or Word formats by clicking on the Export button. You can also print your report to your local printer by pressing the Print button. Another powerful feature is the Custom Data Export. It allows you to export the data on the report to a configurable text file that can later be imported by your favorite POS software. To export the data, you must first configure and generate the report as I just described. Then you click on the Custom Export button. Several new configuration options will be displayed. Which configuration to use depends on which file format and data your POS is expecting. Consult your POS company for more details. For this video, we use a simple configuration in order to show the basic options. Firstly, you must select the exported file type. The options are text file or TXT and comma separated values or CSV. I will select the text file type. Then you must select the delimiter to be used to separate the values in each line of the file. You can select one of the predefined characters or define a custom one. Let's select a semicolon as a delimiter. 
Next, you must decide if the file should or should not contain the name of each selected columns in the first line. It is selected by default, so let's leave it as is. The text qualifier field allows you to select a character that will surround all text fields. It helps some POS softwares to differentiate between text fields and other types of fields when importing the file. And finally, you must choose which fields will be on the exported file. The fields will be exported in the same order as they are selected. To select or unselect a field, you must use the selection buttons. The box on the left represents all the available fields. As you can see, there are several different fields to choose from. The box on the right represents the currently selected fields and the order in which they will be exported. For this example, let's select the venue ID, the zone ID, the brand ID, the brand name, and the quantity. Once you've finished selecting the fields, you can press the Refresh Preview button to see a quick preview of the file contents in the bottom area of the screen. You are free to make additional changes to the configuration in order to get the file in the desired format. But remember to press the button again after each change. For example, let's add a text qualifier to the file. When we click the Refresh Preview button, the preview is immediately updated to show the new configuration. Once the file is in the desired format, you can download the file by clicking on the Download File button. The file will be saved to a folder on the local machine and is ready to be imported by your POS software. If you're going to be exporting this file often, you can use the Save Settings button to save the file configuration and make the next export much easier. Well, that's it for now. If you have any questions about the Digitot Remote Reporting app, you can call us on our support line on 0861 10 11 70 or send us an email at support at digital.com. Thank you for watching. Bye.